Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about backing safety, vehicle backing safety. One of the most risky things that we do is driving on down the road. Sometimes getting in the car, that's a huge risk for some of us, especially those that drive far. And uh, surprisingly, you'll see that backing safety is one of the most riskiest maneuvers that we'll do while driving um, each day. And so we want to talk about what's, what's the reasons behind that. Why is it such a huge risk? We'll talk about why there's uh, claims that happen from that and accidents that happen from uh, simply backing up the vehicle and how we can prevent it. Um, so good tips and tricks that, that we can use as we um, go forward and drive around. Um, so we need to think about those things, you know, the risks that we have when backing up, um, how that can affect us and, and our, our safety on the roadways. So what we find is about 50% of all claims that we see that come in from the state, state here and, and throughout the nation on, on average is about 50% of all claims are just from backing up the vehicle. Um, the surprising thing is this is something that's 100% preventable. Uh, this is something that we can do. Uh, if we take our time, we can learn to avoid issues when backing, but we have to pay attention. And there's some, some tips that I'll show you um, that we can learn from. Um, there's actually lots of things that we back into. Um, there's sometimes really some hazardous things that can happen where people are walking behind us or maybe backing into other vehicles. Um, but we need to learn to prevent those things. And part of that is creating awareness around that, um, which is our goal from this webinar today, to, to bring that to awareness for us. So what kinds of things are we backing into? What kind of things um, are typical that we see? Um, this could be poles, trees, or signs, and any type of object or structure, anything that's behind the vehicle when we're backing up. Uh, parked cars, a lot of times it's in just a parking lot. Uh, people are backing up trying to get out of their parking space and hit the car behind them. Um, as I mentioned, people, sometimes kids, people playing behind vehicles and, and walking behind a car as you're backing up. Those are things that you need to watch for and also objects that are left behind vehicles. Sometimes we get in the car and we go to back up and realize that, wow, there's, there's something there we didn't know it was there when we parked it before. Um, so we have to watch for those things. We have to know what's there. And uh, these are things that we typically see that people are backing into. Uh, a lot of poles, a lot of, a lot of fences, and, and little objects there that can be hit. So what's the problem? Well, some of these uh, accidents are pretty minor. A lot of times backing up, people are going very slow. And they'll often just back into something, bump it, uh, have a little dent in the bumper, something smaller, maybe a little scrape on the side of the car. Uh, but there has been cases where there's really tragic results where bad things can happen. Um, you might have heard of stories where people have been run over from being backed up, even kids, and uh, you know, running over bikes and things like that. So there can be some really tragic issues. That's it, it could be really devastating, um, but a lot of times it is the minor um, type of accidents there. Um, so regardless of the severity, we need to, to make sure that we're paying attention and, and uh, not not hitting things behind us. So just some things to think about to, to raise awareness about this when backing up. Like I say, this is one of the, the biggest risks that we have. Um, but here's a question for you. How many miles per day do you think you drive? How, how many miles on average um, would you think that is? I want you to think about that. Think about how far you drive, uh, the distances that you go when you drive to work every day or when you're running errands, uh, the total miles per day. I, I would imagine there's, there's quite a few for most people. Now I want you to think about how many of those miles each day are backing up the vehicle. It's really a small minor amount compared to the amount of miles you drive. So I would say most people 30, 40 miles a day probably where an average backing up, you're maybe going 50 to 100 feet is all, not even a mile um, backing up in reverse. But yet there's still 50% of the claims and losses from, from backing the vehicle. So it's a huge risk. It's a very small distance. Um, but there's some real challenges with that that we want to draw attention to. So we need to remember that when we're backing up that vehicle, it's not a very far distance, but the risk is there um, because that is where accidents happen. Um, so what's the problem? What do we see? Well, sometimes it's inattention. Sometimes we are distracted. Maybe it's things in our mind or we're, we're in a hurry. We're just thinking about things. We don't take the time to think that this is a really risky move and we've got to be careful backing up that vehicle. It might be the phone. It might be conversation in the car. Uh, it could be the radio. It could be other things that just get in the way of, of us being focused on backing up that vehicle safely. Um, other problems, other things that cause this are unnecessary backing. Sometimes um, the way that we park in the parking lot, we can make it so that we don't have to back out, and that can make it a lot easier on us. Um, there's also blind spots in vehicles, depending on the type of car and the design and the way the windows and mirrors are. There could be blind spots that things are hard to see, and that can cause people to back into things that they can't see as they're backing up. 
So large vehicles and, and the type and shapes and sizes of vehicles, those are factors as well. Uh, but we want to draw attention to this because these are things that we can learn from uh, so that we can prevent these backing accidents. Um, so when it comes to parking, you know, how do we fix this? How do we avoid um, preventing these backing accidents? Well, parking selection is one thing we can do. Um, as you can see here in the picture, uh, sometimes we pull into parking lots that are really tight and crowded, and that can make it really hard when it comes time to back out. Um, so one of the things that I like to do, having driven a truck for many years, I've learned that sometimes the turning radius is hard in parking lots, and so I learned to park in the far end of a parking lot. Uh, it's a little bit more of a walk, um, but that's okay because when it comes time to go, it's a lot easier to get out of that parking lot when there's not two cars crammed right to, to each side of you. Um, so deciding where you park is a factor. And then also um, make it so that you can pull through. Um, you can pull through your parking spot um, or you could back in on arrival uh, when there's no cars there. It's a lot easier to pull out of your parking space uh, pulling forward and looking at your front windshield than having to turn your head and have blind spots and issues when you're backing up. Um, so park away from, from large obstructions or other vehicles. Try to keep, keep yourself some space, especially in parking lots and tight areas. Uh, make it easier on yourself and sometimes just by pulling into that parking spot and pulling through avoids the the need to back up in in, in what you're doing so make it make it easy on yourself and decide to uh, make it easy with the way that you park in there um, other ways that we can fix this are uh, the equipment design um, looking at the types of equipment we use the trucks the types that we have sometimes there's things that are better um, the mirrors on the sides can be easier sometimes there's better um, cars that have, don't have as many blind spots, and there's things that we can learn from there. Uh, one thing as well is a uh, goal. This is to get out and look. Before you go to back up a vehicle, just take a second and go back there. Take a look and see what's there. See your distances um, from other objects or other cars. See if there's, there's anything that could get in the way. Simply getting out and looking before you back can, can help to prevent that. Uh, you could use a spotter, have somebody guide you back. That's really useful, especially when backing up a trailer or if there's something you just can't see in a really tight area, just ask somebody to help you to back up. And some organizations even have a backing policy uh, where they have a policy in place that require employees to either pull through park or back into their space on arrival so that they don't get caught in a bad situation in a tight parking lot and have to back out and, and possibly hit something. So there are some ways to fix it. Um, a lot of this is having awareness about it and uh, knowing what we can do to prevent that. So we need to prepare to back. And, and part of that is uh, making sure that we have clear windows. And in, in wintertime, uh, there could be snow and ice on there. There could be you know, dust or, or low visibility of some kind. Make sure that you have clear windows that you can clearly see what's behind you before you go to back that car. Um, adjust your mirrors. Uh, make sure that your mirrors can see the sides. Uh, make sure you can see. Turn your head. Um, watch both directions. Sometimes you could be in a parking lot starting to back up. And there's cars that can, can come flying down that parking lane. And uh, you have to check both ways and make sure it's clear before you go. Uh, if it's a place where there's people, maybe ask them to stay clear. Just say, hey, hold on, I'm going to back up this car. Or let the people pass through. They, they, they should be able to walk past and get out of the way before you start to back up. Uh, but those are things that you can do before you back that can help to make it easy on yourself and make it easier to back that vehicle. Um, when it comes to equipment design, there's lots of different types of trucks and, and, and utility vehicles and vans and things like that that have different blind spots. And in the picture here, it shows an example of how far behind each car the driver could see an orange cone that's placed behind there. So some of those are 15, 40 feet behind those vehicles, depending on the, the type and shape of the vehicle. So know where your blind spots are. Know what your limitations are if you have to back up a vehicle. And uh, you know, a spotter or some, some help there might be really good when backing up a large truck like that that you just can't see. Um, other good features, things that you can add into equipment are backup alarms. This reminds people uh, when you're backing up, they can hear that alarm. And also backup cameras are very helpful as well um, to show what's behind the vehicle. So I've gotten really used to having a, a backup camera. I've gotten to where as soon as I put my car in reverse, I can see what's, what's behind there. Um, you might find objects or other things left there. It's a really helpful thing to back, but it is not a perfect solution. It doesn't guarantee that you can see everything perfectly. Um, sometimes it's dark at night and can still be hard to see with the backup camera, um, but it does definitely help. It gives an added um, view of what's behind you as you're backing up. So you want to be aware of that. Learn to use it as you can, but realize that you are still responsible as the driver to know what's behind there 
And uh, sometimes you got to get out and look and get out and look before you back up and see what's there, um, even without the cameras. Uh, it would be terrible to back up and find somebody in your in your wheel well. Um, I think this is a picture of a kid that got stuck in there. I don't know if they necessarily got uh, ran over, but they're they're stuck in there. But you would hate to find this. You would hate to back up over somebody or an object or have a serious accident. And so that's why we want to get out and look. Um, some people will do what's called a circle of safety. This is something where when you get to your car and you're ready to back it up, just take a circle, walk around it, walk around and see what's there, see the distances away from things, see what's on the side, see if there's any objects. And you can also take a look at your car condition at that time. See if the tires are inflated, make sure there's no damage. Um, that's just a really good practice that you can do is walk around your car uh, before you go to back that up. Um, some people do um, other practices like placing a cone. I've heard of utility companies doing this where when they park their truck, every time they park, they will go behind there and place one of those orange cones there. And, and there's a couple of good things that happen with that. It creates visibility for others. They can see that there's a cone there. They can see there's a car there. But for the driver that goes to back up, they have to walk back there and pick up that cone before they, they back up and before they leave. And so it's just that one extra step to go back there and take a look and uh, see what's behind there before they back that vehicle up. So those are some really good ideas and tips and things that might help. Uh, I think the parking selection is a huge thing. Think about that when you arrive. How, how are you going to make it easier on yourself to get out and back out of, of where you decide to park? That's one of the biggest things you can do. And eliminate distractions. We know that distractions cause a lot of, uh, a lot of accidents. Uh, it takes our mind off of what we're doing. We lose our focus. And sometimes that can, can lead to backing. So when you go to back your vehicle, you have to remind yourself and say, this is the highest risk maneuver that I'll do while driving. Even though it's a very short distance, there's huge risk. And that's where the, the possibility is for accidents there. So keep your phone turned off, watch your conversations, uh, maybe turn the radio off, stay focused on, on backing to avoid um, an accident there. Uh, one of the best things I've learned is uh, you want to get oriented. Sometimes when you go to back up a vehicle or even if you have a trailer on, um, sometimes the, the angles can be a little bit different and you may have things you have to go around as you're backing up. And so uh, before you back, make sure that your vehicle is oriented, that it's going in at the right angle and uh, scout it out first. Go see what's back there, see if there's things you have to, to steer around or, or avoid. Um, and with a trailer, this is really important because you want to line that up and make sure there's nothing back there that you're going to have that trailer swing into or, or turn the wrong way. Um, so straighten things out, get, get lined up in the first place that it's an easier way to back, um, that your angles aren't hard to, to back up that vehicle. Um, make sure that you adjust your mirrors. You want to be able to clearly see uh, the rear of the vehicle and the sides of the vehicle, um, use your mirrors. They're, they're there to help you, and adjusting those can be um, really good for, for watching those sides and back as you back the vehicle. Uh, make sure that you're watching where you're going. Uh, don't just rely on that backup camera. Make sure that you turn your head and focus on what's back there. Use your mirrors, check your sides and your back as you're backing up, and uh, focus on it. This is, this is one of the highest risk things. We want to focus and pay attention to what we're doing as we back up. Uh, watch all your sides. Watch for objects. Watch for any structures or any things that might be there. Uh, watch for the people as they're passing around you. Look at the angles, the directions, and especially um, be aware of your blind spots on those. Um, but if we focus and take time and look at those things and be aware that there could be things behind us or moving behind us, that, that those are things that can really help us to, to avoid backing accidents. Um, some other tips and tricks you might want to think about is make sure that you start slow. Uh, when you go to back up, don't just, you know, throw it in reverse and go really fast and, and go at a fast speed. Take it slow. Make sure that you're, you're steering and turning at a slow, slow rate, kind of a slow and steady way. Um, small, slight movements is a really good way to start out with backing to make sure you're going the right way. Uh, make sure that they're, they're going on right and that you're backing the direction you need. Um, one thing, too, is if you start backing up, and this happens for just a vehicle or a trailer, if you start backing up and something's not, going in at the right angle or it's making it really tough, you're just not sure if you're going to be able to squeeze in there, take some extra time and don't be afraid to try again. Uh, you can always pull forward, straighten things out, and uh, come in at a little slight different angle. Um, take your time and don't be afraid to uh, back even if it takes a couple times to get it right. Because it's not worth going really fast and hitting something and having an accident because uh, you were in a hurry there. So, so take your time, do it right. Um, and when it comes to a spotter, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's people that can help you. Um, if you have somebody with you in the car, just say, hey, this is 
you know, this is really tight. I need a little bit of help to get behind here. Do you mind stepping out and guiding me back? And I don't think anybody would have a problem, you know, helping you out there. Um, but don't be afraid to just ask somebody to help guide you back. That can really help to prevent accidents as well. Um, realize that if you do have a spotter, the driver is still the one responsible. It's really ultimately their responsibility to keep that vehicle safe and not hit things. Um, so be aware of that. It's also important to know um, the hand signals. Make sure you talk to each other, that you know uh, the hand signals and that you can see each other. You want to keep that eye contact and roll that window down so that you can hear each other if you have to talk. Um, but make sure you communicate and keep that uh, contact open there to, to back it up safely. Um, so you might think about the position of the spotter. Where do they need to stand uh, in a safe location where they're not going to get run over or hit, but also in a position that you can see them and communicate with them through hand signals or, or things that are needed to back you up there. Um, so make sure you coordinate with them. Make sure you're on the same page as far as uh, what hand signals you're using. Realize that you are, are the one responsible. When you're in a car, when you sit in that seat and you put those keys in and you turn that, that ignition on and you're sitting there, that's really on you to be the one it keeps the vehicle safe and avoiding accidents. So uh, we need to realize that, that, it, that it's on us to take responsibility for that. We can always learn new skills. We can learn to be uh, better drivers. We can uh, put these skills to practice and, and do that. But we have to be the ones that choose to do that. We have to choose to drive defensively, to, to focus and do all we can to avoid the accidents. And uh, like I say, this is the biggest risk we have is backing up a vehicle when driving. So uh, make sure you take it serious and, and take time to keep yourself safe. Uh, to summarize, we've talked about why backing accidents happen, some of the factors that go into that. Uh, realize that these are preventable. Uh, like I say, about 50% of all claims, this is what it's from, and we can really uh, reduce those if we take time and, and do our part to prevent those. Uh, don't back if you don't have to. It makes it a lot easier to pull out of a, a parking location or something if you don't have to back up. So make it easier on yourself. Give yourself plenty of space. Uh, choose a good location to park where it's safe and, and makes it easy on you. Um, whenever there's a dangerous task, we have to focus. And uh, part of that is back in the vehicle. Make sure you focus on it. Don't be distracted. Make sure you eliminate distractions. Uh, it's important to get out and look, see what's there, and just take it slow. A lot of times these backing accidents happen from people going way too fast. They're in a hurry. They're just not thinking. They throw it in reverse, and the accident happens. Um, so take it slow and, and avoid the accident. That's really the goal and tips for reminders today on that. Um, so that's the summary. Do we have any questions, Jason? I haven't had any questions submitted quite yet. So folks, type those into the Q&A box or the, or the uh, chat box, and we'll get Brent to answer those right now. Um, this is a, it's an interesting subject because we've spent, we've spent a lot of time uh, hitting this in our defensive driving classes, and, and yet it continues to be one of our most common um, causes of causes of claims and and accidents that happen out there, um, and so that's really why we spend the spend the time on it uh, that we do. And so, what do you think out there? Is as your uh, um, let's see, it looks like it looks like Naples is working on a <laughs> working on a joke for us. What do you think out there is is the the most important thing that we can do? Uh, to prevent these backing crashes or other questions that you have out there. If people type some stuff in. We're waiting with bated breath, aren't we, Doug? I can see Doug smiling, waiting for... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> it's funny how this uh, this issue of backing is, is such a common um, such a common thing, and it doesn't matter what your job description or what department you work in. Um, this is one that really goes across uh, across all different uh, different occupations where we have these backing crashes. I'm seeing no questions and comments come in there. Any uh, Doug, you got anything to uh, add or? Well, there was a couple of things that I really liked that Brent said, you know, parking out a little farther away, yeah, I think is a really good thing. I think a lot of people get themselves in a much more precarious situation by insisting on finding that closest parking place, that most convenient one. Of course, that's where everybody else wants to be, too. So you're increasing your risk of having a collision with somebody when you're trying to park where everybody else wants to park. 
uh, where there's more foot traffic and stuff. So I think that's a really good point. If you're have if you've had some accidents in your parking lot and in your parking areas, maybe think about where is the best place for us to park our vehicles. Maybe we're not parking our vehicles, you know, in the safest place. Uh, and also, you know, Brent was talking about using a spotter, and it's really important if you're using a spotter. If you can't see that spotter, stop. Don't move. Uh, there are, you know, regular tragedies that happen where we run over the spotter because they step behind the vehicle where we don't see them, and, and then they, they get swashed between the vehicle and a post or something like that. So, you know, using that spotter, make sure the communication is constant and that you can always see them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is a this is one of those one of those challenging challenging things, and I think each one of us just needs to make a commitment to uh, to do a few of these a few of these things that Brent has pointed out. They're not they're not anything that's rocket science. It's nothing nothing that's uh, way above um, what we've maybe learned in the past. It's just getting our head in the game and, and helping out. Okay. Um, so we did have uh, we did have one question here. What do you call an alligator with a vest? Jim, you got me on that one. <laughs> it's an investigator. Oh. Oh. And the groan happens. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your participation today. We'll be doing this same subject at 9 o'clock today, so if some of your folks missed it, if they haven't signed up, send me an email to jason at utahtrust.gov, J-A-S-O-N at utahtrust.gov, and I'll get a, get a link there, as well as for the Confined Space Entry webinar that we'll be doing at 10 o'clock. That's a really important subject, um, and so get folks signed up if they, if they haven't already. Thanks very much for your attendance today and appreciate all of uh, all of your support of our training programs. And don't forget that YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Go out and subscribe to that right now and uh, and we'll get you little bits and, and uh, little treasures here and there on a regular basis. Thanks so much, folks. Go out and have a safe day.